bringing the people behind our food to life. We are going to make one of the quintessential American kid and crowd-pleasing dishes, and that is mac and cheese. But we're going to turn it on its head and make cauliflower mac and cheese. So this cauliflower is going to create this incredibly luscious creamy sauce instead of a cream sauce. And I got this idea from Mark Bittman. I've adapted it a bit, but I've got to give credit because it, it is a really, really clever idea. Not only is it delicious and it uses a whole head of cauliflower, but it looks exactly like normal mac and cheese. So for people who don't love vegetables in their pasta, this is a perfect gateway to get a lot of delicious vegetable in people. A lot of my students have partners or children who you know, aren't in that camp of um, loving cauliflower and vegetables. So this has become a favorite, favorite in class. And it's clever in a couple of ways, this dish, because you can cook the cauliflower in a pot of salted boiling water and you scoop it out and then you throw in the pasta. So I'm going to drain this cauliflower now. It's tender. It's been cooking in salted boiling water. Salt's important. And the great thing is we're going to take this out and have that hot salted water ready for the pasta to go in since they both need hot salty water. So it's a one pan kind of deal. And if you have a nice slotted spoon or this is called a spider, this is really easy to bring out. And there'll be a couple of little tiny pieces of cauliflower bits that stay in the water, which is perfectly fine. Those will get strained out when we drain the pasta. And here goes our pasta. Same water. And a stir. There we go. So it's quick and it saves dishes. So once you have the cauliflower cooked, you just cook it till it's tender because you're gonna we're gonna process it in here. So you want it to be soft, and you actually don't have to worry if it overcooks a little bit beyond what you would normally cook cauliflower. You don't have to worry about it at all. So then scoop that out, put the pasta in. And then when you have both of those drained, really it's just a matter of assembling um, a few things, pulsing the sauce in the food processor. And if you don't have a food processor, you can actually mash the cauliflower with a potato masher and have a slightly chunkier sauce, but you can actually get a very, very similar effect. So we are though gonna use the processor and I'm gonna talk about one thing that makes this dish particularly good I use something, again, that I didn't invent, but that I've adapted, which is called homemade vegetable bouillon. And it's this incredibly rich paste of raw vegetables, many vegetables like you would put in a normal vegetable stock, leeks, carrots, celery, celery root, onions, and they're just processed in the food processor raw with a bunch of salt. And that gives you a paste that you can put in the freezer and it's scoopable in its frozen form because of the salt content. And you just add a teaspoon, to about a teaspoon to two teaspoons to a cup of water to get a, a perfectly savory broth. So basically this means you have instant stock or broth whenever you want it. And it's full of vegetables. It's very, very cheap to make and it's delicious. And, it's, and the vegetables are raw, so you're actually getting even more nutrients. So I'm just gonna mix that up. If you just have chicken stock or any vegetable broth or stock that you typically use, that's great, use that but um, this is a really fun, fun trick to have in your pantry. Now, we are going to put the cauliflower in the processor. And if you have a smaller food processor, you may need to work in batches. We may even need to work in batches. We'll see how this goes. So it is a lot of cauliflower. And then what makes this sauce so delicious and enables it to sort of stand in for a cream sauce are a couple of really key ingredients. So Dijon, a Dijon style mustard gives it a, a wonderful kick. It's actually something I use in a regular mac and cheese as well. But um, I'm gonna put about three teaspoons of that in, gives it a nice kick. Speaking of kick, um, some red pepper flakes are really lovely. And you can moderate the heat, you know, adjust to your, to your liking. And some salt, of course. But the, the bouillon itself is salty, so you don't wanna go too crazy, and a typical stock or, or a broth that you might be using may also be already well salted, so be careful there too. A bit of pepper. And this is kind of a secret ingredient. If you do not have nutmeg or freshly grated nutmeg, that's fine. I'm a big fan of nutmeg, and I have a little grater. But it is a very delicious addition. And again, if you don't have nutmeg, you by all means can make the dish. But if you do, you should use it. 
And what do we have here? Chili flakes and a little bit of olive oil. You can also skip this, but because you don't have the rich cream sauce, I think a little bit of olive oil rounds things out quite nicely. So just two tablespoons. And now we are gonna add our liquid, whatever it is that you're using. I'm gonna go a little bit. I think I can make it all work. And we're gonna give that a whiz. And it very quickly liquefies. We're gonna add a little bit of cheese. And again, this is a much less cheese than is typical for a mac and cheese dish, and you can certainly add more. But if you're wanting to keep it a little on the healthier side, you can stick with, it's about, about three quarters of a cup in the sauce, and then I save a little to put, to put on top. And now we're gonna have a taste. Taste. Tasting is so important. Tasting for salt, tasting for acidity. We may need a little more, a little more Dijon, um, more pinch of chili flakes. So, mm. Mm. oh, I can't wait. It's actually just about right. I think I'm gonna put in a tiny bit more, tiny bit more mustard. You know, every cauliflower head is a little bit, has a little different size. All your stocks are gonna be a little bit different. So it's a really good thing to remember is to taste as you go. So that once the finished product is there, it's delicious. Alrighty. So now we are just gonna put the whole thing together. Top it with a few breadcrumbs, if you'd like, and some more cheese. So here's our pasta that we cooked in that same water. And you wanna make sure you cook the pasta a few minutes less than you typically would, since it's going to be with liquid in the oven again. So it's gonna get more cooking time. And you really wanna, it's gonna look like a lot of sauce, but you want a lot of sauce per pasta because it'll absorb some of it. And I think just creamier the better. Get all that goodness out. So here we go. And you have a few, you can see a few of the flecks from the vegetables, but more or less, it's gonna look very similar to a typical mac and cheese. Mix it up a little bit. This is a very one-tone meal, but there is so much delicious vegetable in there. Get it all nice and spread around. And our remainder, our leftover cheese. And a few breadcrumbs. Give it a nice crust on top. Makes it pretty. So, there's our entire head of cauliflower with some pasta and our, our delicious sauce and our crispiness. So we're gonna put that in the oven. All right, we have our cauliflower mac and cheese or mac and cheese with lots of cauliflower, um, all ready and crisp. And the th problem with this dish is I eat too much of it. I know when I'm gonna make this, I have to restrain myself because I will make myself ill eating this because I love it so much. And actually the way I restrain myself is remembering that it makes the best leftovers in the world. My favorite way to heat it up, if this is if you're at home for lunch the next day, makes it easy. A little bit of oil in a, in a frying pan, and put a big portion of it in and don't touch it and leave it on high and it gets all crisp and then flip it, do the same thing. It's so good. So that's my favorite way of having this actually. It's the next day, fry it up a little bit. How's that for decadent? But it's cauliflower. So, you know, you really can't, you really can't complain. And then this again, it, it's kind of, it could be a one dish meal, but it's a little monotone in color. So a salad would be lovely, some fruit, Anything really simple and, and light makes a perfect accompaniment to this. So I'm excited to eat.